Hi. Hey, Jordan. Hi, Jordan. How's it going? Hey, Good. it's going Good. well, going well. Sorry about the last couple of no months. No worries. I, I have my um my earbuds and I'm like, is it me? And it, anyways, it's all good. No, no, no. no. Oh, <laughs> so it, it was not, yeah. It was shaky for us too. Yeah. So Such as technology. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> how how, how was your weekend? It was really nice. It was pretty mellow. Like, I always feel like after, like, Thanksgiving, it's always kind of nice to just, you know, be at home and, like, go for walks. And, like, I have two dogs and, like, spending a lot of time with them and then also seeing some friends as well. Hi, um, hi how's it going? Hi, how are you? Can you hear me well? Yeah. Yes, yes, yes we can. Yes. Yes. Mm, my voice, I can't hear very well so the voice is a little bit lower can i come back yes 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 you can hear us okay oh man everyone yeah, I, having... I could actually hear some echo in her yeah but she will be back yeah did you both have a good weekend did you do anything fun yeah yeah well we uh we slept we got some some rest and then uh you know because things have been so busy with work um and you know adulting and all that so it's nice to just be able to... <laughs> okay, yeah. can you hear everybody now yes much better now the voice was a little bit lower so but now oh. hi everybody hi, hi. <laughs> good, hi, to so good to see you good to, to see, see you good to see everybody too we, yeah. were recapping, we were just recapping about how our weekends went and we were saying yeah. that uh, the dean and I we just rested. Yes. I think we got some well needed rest. Yes. Oh. So yeah, no, I didn't hear all the yeah. So how was your day? <laughs> I didn't hear um Jordan, how was your um, your, your weekend? Yeah. Mine was mellow. Um I just like hung out at home with the dogs and like saw some friends, like nothing too crazy. Like, yeah. very oh, crazy. okay. Yeah. Oh, that's good. That's good. Yeah, no, I, mine was just relaxing too. I was, um, yeah, I I went to see a friend, a friend, of, one of the, my friends uh, did a Friendsgiving. So mm -hmm. uh, I went Saturday, but the other days I was just, you know, Thanksgiving, I was just home. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> giving, giving yeah, yeah. gratitude to yourself. Yeah, right. right. <laughs> <laughs> Myself, and I relaxed and just, you know, yeah, stayed home. Yeah. It was just very. What, what do you guys normally do on this holiday season? Like, how, how does it feel, holiday season for you guys? Ooh. Um, for me, I always feel like I to be mindful of like not burning out because I think there's so many amazing opportunities for super social and like see lots of people like just to be like out and about and at the same time like I get really tired and then I want to like hide and hibernate so I feel like it's kind of like finding the balance between like, out in the world and then also yeah. you know like being home um, as well and like taking advantage of like the chilly weather and cozy like watching movies or reading yeah. or yeah doing all the fun winter activities what about you yeah yeah i mean it's kind of the same thing for, for <laughs> us as well because i i was telling the dean the other day i'm a i'm a fall guy like i'm a fall winter i was born in october so i feel like this is my my season of the year <laughs> and so i really have to fight the desire and the urge to just like chill. Yeah. I, 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 you know there's work that needs to be done yeah, you can't just slack off when you whenever you want to. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm like, I need to, I need to, I need to get get up off this couch right now <laughs> and get some work done. But yeah, I empathize with what you're talking about with uh, with just wanting to relax and, and chill. But mm -hmm. um, someone mentioned giving a moment ago. Does everybody know what today is? Today is Giving Tuesday. <laughs> yes. Giving Tuesday. Yes, it is. Yeah. And so um, for everybody who's not uh, aware, today um, we are here with Jordan and Consulate to talk about Soul Germ Yoga and, um, and, and the nonprofit world and, and yoga and meditation, perhaps. And um, if you all do want to donate, I'm just going to put that out there, you can go and visit the link down below. It's in the pinned comment right there. Yes. And it's also all over social media um, to support uh, Jordan and Soldier and Yoga and donate and we do have a couple of garments that um that base range we have made specifically for this moment so if yes. you donate 
you will have the opportunity to take home one of those garments um and uh and yeah, we'll see. We'll see how we'll it goes. See, we'll see. We'll see who's the lucky we'll see winner. Who the lucky winner is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so so um so talking about yoga, I think we have a lot of questions for you. Uh, I know, Consola, you also practice yoga, and we have a, a uh, we have a yoga teacher here. Mm -hmm. So for someone who's never heard of yoga because you're more well, you work globally so you probably meet a lot of people who has never heard about yoga who don't know anything about it how how do you describe it to them that's a great question so for me yoga you look at like Sanskrit like the um the root of it is you that's to yoke or or union so I think in a simple a simple way to state it is yoga is bringing together your mind your body and your um, your heart, um, and I know in Kenya Rwanda it's Roho. Is that right? Roho. 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 Yes. Roho. Yeah. Roho. Yes. Roho. yes. <laughs> I don't know. Um. So I think it's that kind of it's that embodiment practice of when your internal world meets with your external world, and that like merging together. Um, and I think the physical practice is a really great um, entry point in discovering that because you're asked to like physically like move through different shapes and poses and then also um, to focus on your breathing, which then is a great way to kind of like calm the mind down because oftentimes mm -hmm. I even know for me, like a laundry list will, you know, start to like kind of, you know, roll in my head unless I, you know, have something really tangible to focus on and the breath is such a great um, vehicle to really utilize because you can always yeah. focus on your breath like you have it with you always um, which then is an opportunity to be kind of like slow down your mind and get re really clear and get really conscious and aware of maybe other things that are going on or other things that you potentially need be at rest be it um, other kinds of like spiritual practices maybe you're like journey or you know an opportunity just to um, just to like reconnect with yourself yeah 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 then that's you know that's something i think we spoke about in the last conversation but yoga has been something uh for me that i've started to implement in my life um i think out of a need i didn't know it was out of necessity at the time but i think when, when you know because it is such a such a spiritually like grounding activity mm -hmm. and you you kind of inherently know when you need to um uh, I don't know how to exp how to describe it, but it, you, you need to get it out. You need to sort of express yourself in that particular way. Like your soul needs it. Yeah. And so it came in my life in a time where I think maybe spiritually there needed to be some sort of growth there. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. the transformative properties of yoga, if you let it, mm -hmm. is, um, is substantial. And that's something that's, for me, and, and I only do it so so like so very little i guess yeah. but for people who practice it more regularly i am just curious about how much uh, of a lifestyle change it is and how much growth those people sustain um well constantly like you practice yoga like what do you, <laughs> you know i do practice yoga but i try to i'm not consistent as i used to when you used to live here but I, I'm trying to kind of like pushing myself. But um, one of the things that I know, uh, of course, like um, I've learned it more from you, you know, even like to get to learn more about what yoga is for your body, mind, and of course, um, the whole being of you. And for me, uh, in the beginning, when I started, I didn't necessarily like understood very well what it meant, what it was doing for my body. But then the more I understood it, it became like one of my favorite thing to do, like exercise to do for, to make, to make me feel good overall, like my whole body, mind. And, and, um, I, I, I enjoy whenever I do yoga, I feel like, like I feel rejuvenated. I feel like I'm alive, you know, like it's one of the things that really that has helped me, um, to kind of connect, you know, you know, to, to, to get to know my body more, like to get to know what I feel, like where I feel hurt or even like 
um, how I want to feel good within myself. So I, it's one of my favorite exercises. Really, to me, uh, it makes me feel good. And, and it has helped me also in my, in my healing, my healing journey. This is one of the things that I will suggest for anybody who have gone through anything or in it, anything in life. All of us go through things in life. But really, yoga helps you to kind of like, you know, feel good about yourself. So I really love it. Whenever I allow myself to do they have, I, I'm trying to really be consistent as I used to before. But, uh, <laughs> yes. But when, when, when Jordan was living here, I, I was always like, <laughs> let's go. Let's go. Is it, was it Jordan who introduced you to yoga? No, I, I, I learned more from her. I used yes. to know it, but I learned it. They kind of understood it better from her because we we were kind of. Of course, she's close. my my close friend, and then would I I kind of had a close friend who was teaching was teaching me closely, like to get yeah, to know yeah. it more. So, but I knew it. I used to go, and but I didn't understand it, you know, better. But until I met her, so well, thank Jordan, you. What did you do, Jordan? What did you do to 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 transform Constance's mind? I know. Yeah, go well, with the so the um, <laughs> you know, I think, I think for me, teaching, and it's something I, I live in London now, um, something like I, I did more because I really do miss teaching. Um, and I used to teach at different studios in New York and, um, you know, when Souls and Yoga was just starting off, we used to do a lot of um, really fun events and would bring together like different modalities and well. And it was great just in terms of um, really being able to build a fantastic supportive community um, mm -hmm. in, in NYC. Mm -hmm. And I really miss that. Um, I know, we miss you. Yeah. Please come back. <laughs> <laughs> well, I will definitely be here. Um, I think it's giving people the space to to be themselves and to say, like I always say at the beginning, like the mm -hmm. sequence or this this these movements are just an, an offering and you can take as much as you want and leave as much as you want behind and like this practice is for you and like yes, I'm gonna guide you through like different breathing practices or meditations or like physical, you know, sequences like linking like different poses or shapes together. Mm -hmm. But like do really like it's up to the person on the mat who decides what they want to do and also what they don't want to do as well. And I think just having it be really open-ended and kind of, you know, taking your ego out of it and just letting yeah. people just experience. Yeah. Um, I mean, those are the teachers I always connect to the most is, is when there's, um, there's freedom in, in terms of the offering. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. And it's more accessible, right? Like, yeah. 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 No. Mm, go ahead, Constance. No, no, I really, really appreciate all you do. And what I love about um, Sojin, Jordan, of course, <laughs> uh, they they don't know, they don't only teach you. They, they allow you to get to understand, and at the same time, you know, you practice, and at the same time, learning. So, yeah. uh, and 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 you get to understand it better. Not everybody is good at that. So, of course, I I knew yoga for a long time but then you know the way she teaches you the way she also helps you and then you get to to practice on your own so i mean it's a mm -hmm. it's a beautiful thing so um and and i understood it in a deeper way that i never understood it before so um and then i loved it it became like uh even during the pandemic i would just have it on my laptop and just practice on my own so it just mm -hmm. um it's a beautiful thing. Practice yoga is good. So it's really Yeah, fun. it is. It is. But and now, so it's mm. not just in New York. Now, um, Sojourn mm. um, have taken, mm -hmm. taken the yoga to girls around the world. Mm -hmm. And so I'm, I'm wondering, because for your experience, Jordan, before you became a teacher, before you started practicing, how did you feel? Um, and why uh, girls specifically? Why, when you learned how to teach, why did you choose the girls around the world specifically? You, you know, I guess I think back to like my upbringing and being a teenager, and like I was exposed to yoga. Like I grew up in Southern California, so I think you know yeah. maybe the West Coast was a little bit ahead of its time in terms of you know being into different like spiritual practices and then having it be like really integrated in terms of the lifestyle and being exposed to it 
And I remember like going to class when I was young, like 13, 14 years old, like just like on my own. I think my mom had to like sign a waiver for me to like go and take class. And it was just an opportunity to just be, because there's, I just remember at that age, it's so uncomfortable and it's so complicated. And be it like, you know, figuring out, you know, kind of like growing up and then also like academic pressures and then like friends pressures and, and, you know, growing up into, into a young woman, like there's a lot of like stress around that. And I don't think it's, it's talked about enough in terms of the different outlets or the different support systems or channels that I think are really valuable. And then especially, um, I think it's so incredible because now, um, work in Rwanda and we also work in Morocco and it's teaching um, women and also young women. So teenage girls, girls um, in Morocco who are, you know, 15 and 16 years old, not only how to do yoga, but how to teach yoga. And I think that's so much more empowering because then you're giving, you're giving skill set they can step into the leadership role. And I was there over the summer um, during um, our first, our first training. It's a group of nine um, women that, or nine young women or, you know, adolescent girls. Um, they're um, Amazi, they're from the High Island Mountains. And when they started to teach in Tashali and in their, you know, in their language, you could see the confidence when, you know, all of their classmates would like lift up, you know, the same arm and the fluidity that then comes with that. And I think especially at that age, you don't really feel like you have a lot of control over your life or like what's, you know, you know, maybe university is on the horizon. Maybe it's not. If you're in another part of the world, like perhaps that's just not feasible. And so anything that allows autonomy, um, I think is so, so, so valuable, especially at that age, because I think back to if I had had a teacher training at that age, or if I'd had a more focused um, exposure to yoga, as opposed to just kind of like, you know, dropping into to random classes and having it be really taught to me by someone who cares about, you know, young women um, and creating that kind of um, self-confidence. I mean, I think I would be a much different person in a really positive way. I just think it's something that everyone can benefit from. Yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. That's um, and something I wanted to delve yeah. into a little bit more is, uh, the healing power of yoga mm-hmm. and Kansala, you said it helps with your healing um, uh, emotionally. And there's mm-hmm. something very vulnerable, I think, mm-hmm. about yoga. Mm-hmm. Um, and Jordan, you just mentioned it briefly a little bit before, but it it asks certain things from you, not just physically, of course, but emotionally. And to be in a particular space within yourself um, to where you maybe confront things and it can be very uh scary i think for a lot of people you know and so in your eyes and your in your teaching had what have you seen in regards to these young women uh developing the strength to to face some of these vulnerabilities some of these these fears through yoga i think that whether you are walking into a yoga studio in LA or you're doing yoga with a bunch of, you know, women in another part of the world, you never know someone's life experiences. And I think for me, I've had to really step back and and not generalize and like not make any because, you know, I've gone to, you know, classes in New York or LA or London or wherever, and you don't know what the person's is next to you um, in terms of what you've gone through. And like, I've gone to classes with, um, friends of mine who are sexual assault, sexual assault survivors or, you know, friends who, you know, had other kinds of um, traumas and inclu- including myself. And so um, it's something I would never want someone to assume about me just because based on, you know, where I live or, you know, um, what I do and whatnot that I've had X amount of, um, yeah. of experiences. But I do think in terms of, um, for instance, like, you know, the women at Education for All in, in Morocco, um they've had to, they've really had to fight for, for their education. And it's such a blessing and it's such an opportunity to be in a girl's dorm where they have um, an immense amount of um, support for them to, to succeed academically. But then at the same time, there's also an immense amount of pressure that comes with, that comes with it. Because for so many of these young women, like they're the first young women to, to go to school. Um, I think 
their moms, um, cause I was interviewing them over the summer, like a lot of their moms just simply just didn't go to school. Um, mm -hmm. And so I think for them, it's a huge step, um, step forward. Um, because of all everything that comes with it in terms of, you know, the um, economic trickle-down effect, um, in terms of the higher education and, like, that kind of elevation. And then um, having the tools like a yoga practice or a meditation practice to then come back to the ground, especially during exam time, because I know that's so, so, so stressful for them because, you know, yeah. everything is into these exams. Um, and they're so incredible. Um, they're so, so, so inspiring. And um, yeah, I would love to talk about um, our project in Rwanda as well. It's, it's obviously like a different group of women and they're, um, you know, somewhat older, but um, it's an outlet for self-expression. Outlet to be vulnerable and it's, out, and it's an outlet to not have to like be anything. You just have to like, you don't have to do anything. You can be in Vasana and like rest the whole time. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's just an opportunity just to kind of like move and to feel without yeah, having yeah. kind of like, you know, external pressures in that moment to worry about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, ab absolutely. Absolutely. I'm thinking about, you know, um, do, do you guys incorporate meditation as well par as part of the yoga uh, practices that you've been teaching? Because you mentioned the breathing techniques. Uh, you mentioned a lot of uh, really good things that are healing. Yeah. And so I'm wondering, because I, I feel like I may have seen meditation on your website. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Meditation is a huge part of it. And also, too, I think for a lot of people, like meditation is more accessible for like a number of different reasons, be it any kind of like physical conditions or um, space or um, maybe it's just something that, that is – um, a more accessible um, kind of entry point to it. And I know, for instance, so we have the um, assimilated teacher training program in Rwanda, and that was nine women. Um, this was the first round of it in 2019 for the staff and social workers of Camara. And uh, Consul, I would love for you to talk um, more about Camara's amazing work. Um, and it was teaching them how to use you know, meditation for the different projects that they have so be it teaching primary school students or teen moms mm -hmm. and then a way to culturally adapt it and make it um malleable and flexible no 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 no, no pun intended but for but for the community and I think that's huge I think it's a matter of having having this practice have you know fluidity so that more and more people can benefit you know from it um but meditation is something that um that those group of women probably even more so honestly than the physical practice that they've really integrated, especially during COVID. I spoke to a lot of them um, and did interviews with them and, and talking about, you know, did they use their, you know, practice in, in um, during lockdown and whatnot. And, you know, meditation was something that many of them, you know, do either once a day or multiple times a day, or sometimes even mm -hmm. at work as well, which is yeah. incredible. Yeah. 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 Um, they, they, you, you said, um, I, I think you've done a really an incredible work. I, I've seen it a lot with uh, the work you've done with um, with Comera. <laughs> Comera, um, you know, we, we you know, it's a great organization where also they um, do women, it's a women empowerment organization, education to help young women for, you know, um, for education and other things. So, so and the community in general, where in a, in a rural area in Rwanda. So, and I think you've helped a lot with uh, you know the work you've done with them and helping them to, you know, to heal, to connect with themselves and mm -hmm. the community in general. So, I, I think that was really important um, for the you know for what you've done, mm -hmm. and um, and it's not something that everybody was accustomed to. But the way you were welcomed and they were able to connect with you and learn and, and, and now they are using it on their own. And so it's so beautiful. So I, I think um, yoga, meditation, of course, together, they are so good for your mind and body and soul. So it's a beautiful mm -hmm. thing to, to, to get to learn. And, uh, you know, because like you said, you meet people who have gone through traumatic experience. Wonder we've gone through a lot, genocide mm -hmm. and all that. So, and we we never had the chance to to go deep within ourselves to you know to to heal. So that was so important for us 
you know, for the, everybody around to, to get to, um, to, to, to find something to help them start their healing journey. So, uh, I think, uh, especially even the women too, other women you've met, my, my friend <laughs> from <laughs> Zavota, so that was really good too, uh, women survivors. So, uh, I think that, that really helped a lot. So they tell me that it had to help them a lot in many ways. So, um, I think yoga is so important. What are you doing? It's really important to, um, help people around the world. So keep yeah. doing that. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. And and, yeah. and what, what I love most is that you're not yeah. just teaching them uh, you're also giving them the tools to be able to mm -hmm. teach others. So you're spreading this um uh, Alex calls it like a togetherness, like we're working together mm -hmm. to implement these techniques that they can use even um even when you're not there they can be able to teach other they can be able to reach more people that you won't be able to reach on your own and i think that's incredible to be able uh to teach teaching you know like yeah. it's a, in, and uh, and and even with meditation you mentioned something about uh, women uh, practicing meditation multiple times a day back, mm -hmm. back home in rwanda and it just took me back to, I think, in our in our in our culture, there is a, some type of meditation, even though it's not called meditation or not not like uh, East or Western type of meditation. Mm -hmm. But their way, our way of life has ha, meditation is incorporated in our, our everyday life like just a quiet morning watching the sunset or or a, a, a walk in the field all by yourself and we grew up seeing that in uh, with mm -hmm. yeah, with our our grandparents with uh, with our parents and they're just like those quiet moments that are very important they they they, they do it on a daily mm -hmm. basis and i remember when i was introduced to meditation here for the first time i was like oh this is while my grandpa was doing all the whole time. Me too. Yeah. My grandfather <laughs> was doing the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, so think. I think uh incorporating what my grandpa was doing and everything else I'm learning to uh in that comes from you know in eastern is it I think the east. Um it helps to incorporate these different cultures and bring mm -hmm. these tools to help you flourish in this life. Right. So having this information really helps a lot, and I'm I'm grateful that you are traveling in the, all these parts of the world, just mm -hmm. um, trying to help people have a better peaceful life. Yeah. You know, yeah. having a more mind, peaceful mind, peaceful it's soul, right. and all, <laughs> and, no, uh, yeah. and yeah, and healthy physique. <laughs> Yes. No. Oh, yeah. You feel good. And I actually, I've been saying about our cultures. I remember one time. You know, like as I was, uh, you know, thinking about it, um, my grandfather, like you said, my grandfather used to walk every every evening quietly without talking to anybody. So, yeah. and he would just like walk slowly, quietly, not talking to anybody. So, so did I, my grandfather, yeah. so funny, but yeah. but in, but in, but in just, so he's South African, but in Santa Monica, so he would always like go and take mm -hmm. like walks along, um, like the in, in the park it's like by himself like every yeah, that's so, our grandpa <laughs> i know and slowly it's not even like fast very slow yeah. like a slow walk you know yeah yeah like, and this yeah. is a funny part when i went to one of the retreat um i did a walk that we did like what they call walking meditation mm -hmm. and i immediately envisioned like my grandfather came so don't you think it's crazy like my my what grandfather like as if he was walking beside me. Like I just immediately felt him be walking beside me. So oh. it just like yeah, it was so emotional when I, I I felt it. I was like, wow, maybe that's exactly what he was doing. Like, it's like, <laughs> like what, what, <laughs> even though we never called it walking meditation or a meditation or anything like that. Yeah. But yeah, so that's why I love meditation. I love like yeah. yoga. Anything like really, yeah. 
Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Now we have a name. We know what it is. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we do. <laughs> you, medit you meditate more than I do too. Yeah. Well, again, I, I try. I try. Same thing with yoga. It's it's really for me. Uh, I just get lost in in the the humdrum of everyday life, mm -hmm. like we all do. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And so it takes it takes conscious effort to to breathe, like you said earlier. Yeah. Uh, just to, to stop yeah. and breathe, because you can always breathe. You can always take twenty seconds to just like close your eyes if you need to, and just slow your whole entire world down. Mm -hmm. And that mm -hmm. makes a world of difference. Yeah. And so for me, I think what you what you said. I mean, yeah, I do try to take my my twenty thirty minutes in the morning. Or in the He's morning. like those grandpas. I try. I try. Well, I try to, so that's because, you know, I try to just slow things down. Yeah. But it's very disciplined. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. But it, 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 it takes the discipline. I mean, and Jordan, you can speak to that immensely. It's just, yeah. it takes discipline to, to treat yourself. Yeah. It's, it's, it it's like, um, I read something the other day. It was like, um, oh, I, I can't remember the quote, but it was something about taking care of yourself. Mm -hmm. We all neglect taking care of ourselves. Um, yeah often yeah. a yes. lot of us uh and so it, just the same thing as like drinking a lot of water throughout the day mm -hmm. uh eating your fruits and vegetables meditation is the same thing yes meditation and yoga is the same thing you nourish yeah. yourself in different ways that mm -hmm. perhaps you can't always see immediately you can't see the results immediately but uh the what it does for you in in sort of grounding yourself what it does for me mm -hmm. it's it, it makes it makes all the difference in the world and i think you know, maybe mm -hmm. it can it can keep you sort of level headed in this in this world of especially social media. It's easy to get lost on the on the internet and just forget that you need to take care of yourself. But yeah, yeah. So that's that's what I try to do. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. It's nice to it's nice to meditate. Mm -hmm. So, um, Jordan, um, what are the fun facts about meditation? If you meditate you know, 10 minutes a day or 20 minutes or yoga practice every day. Do you have any like fun facts that people um, don't know? Um, <laughs> um, I'm trying to, well, I think it's not, not as like a cop out, but I think like it's really up to like the individual in terms of like what they decide, like maybe what's the intention behind you know, doing the yoga practice every day. So there's something called a sadhana, which is like a 40 day practice. So that could be, um, mm -hmm. it could be doing, you know, practicing your headstand against a wall for 40 days, you know, between like for five, how long? For 15 how long? minutes. I mean, you, you, could, you could decide it's, it's anything that you choose to do for, for 40 days. It's kind of like Lent in that way, except instead of like taking something away, you're like adding something in or maybe yeah. someone, and you can do it at any point in the year. It's just supposed to be for like a 40 day period of time. Um, or maybe it's, you know, wanting to develop a meditation practice. So that's, you know, starting off sitting for one minute and then you increase it to three minutes and five minutes and then 10 minutes and so on and so on. And then you, you know, do that for, for 40 days as well. And then at the end of that period, I think it's a great opportunity to reflect on seeing like, okay, like bringing in this practice in my daily life, be it, you know, physical practice or pranayama, like the different breathing techniques or meditation, um, or it could even be, you know, something more like self-care related. It could be, um, you know, um, self-care in terms of like, you know, taking a hot bath, like, bathtub or a nice hot like shower you know that's you know no phone out of the room and, and you know and, and that kind of a thing as well um like do I feel different do I feel different about you know my life and my existence like you know so it's it's a good opportunity to like to take inventory in terms of um if it's if it's had any impact and more likely than not like I would say definitely have impact um, and hopefully yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. well yeah um, there's someone here who asked a question, and I think this might be for Jordan. Said, "Do you guys practice deep breathing while doing yoga?" It's for everybody. Deep breathing. So um, something that I'll cue is to try to create like even inhales and even exhales. There's something mm -hmm. called ujjayi breath which is like victorious breath and you're supposed to just breathe like in and out of your nose so like not breathing out of your mouth and it's almost like if you were to like fog up a mirror it's that kind of um, 
that feeling that you would have at like the back of your throat, except it's through it's through your nose. Um, or another way I've heard it described is it kind of like sounds like vision, which I think is really pretty. Um, so I think in terms of like deep breathing, I think it's more about reminding people that breathing, because um, you also want to be. Uh, like, for instance, I'm asthmatic, so I always have to be really mindful that, like, I'm not going to end up having to, like, reach for my, which isn't, like, the world, so it's, it's not, I guess, I don't want people to be breathing, like, too rapidly, even though there are, like, breathing techniques that, that do that, um, there's one called skull shining breath, which is really, which is really, which is, yeah, I know, a Kalabati breath, it's, um, it's, like, it's, you know, it's really intense, um, so, yeah, I think there's a switch that happens when you just say inhale, you know, especially when you're cueing, um, movement with breath, which is something that I always do. So I don't know if it answers the question. It'll be like, inhale, lift your right leg up, exhale, step your right foot forward, breathing in, like reach your arms all the way up, you're in high lunge, and then like hold for the exhale. So I think if you can cue people to unite their breath with their movement, it's going to call for a sense of that kind of embodiment or like that synergy or that like yoga union. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I see. Wow. I see. Oh, you answered the question. You did. That. That's the thing. Yeah, it's beautiful. Oh, that's, uh, I don't want to ruin your name. Um, Who? Mom Chao Lamien. Oh, it's Lamien. Oh, Lamien is our best friend. <laughs> Hi, Lamien. Hi. Um, so I'm, I'm, um, this is another, it's, I don't know if it's a funny question or anything, but I heard there is facial yoga. And what is that? And and why do people need it? Or like is the, it, does it really exist? <laughs> oh, is that like like facial toning? Like when you like do different kinds of like facial massages? You do all these things, yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> Can you teach me that? Like, I have, like, a jade roller, and I have, like, gua sha. I have, like, tools, but I don't have, like, I don't know about face yoga. Oh, like, no. Can, can you demonstrate real quick? Can no, you no, share? I, 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 I'm not, I, I haven't took the class. That's why, because I know you teach yoga, so I heard that this facial yoga, but, oh. um, like, manual or, like, I think for, for like to, to to I think for like your muscles in in like around here I don't know I'm not so I don't know I'm not a yoga teacher I just heard about it but the the, That's the first time I've heard that actually hmm? first time I've heard that. no I've never heard that before mm. oh the dean mm. you're educating us this is great. <laughs> Well, this is for now, right? Like this is, you know, we can all learn from, from yeah. these, these different no, I'm not teaching. I'm, I'm not teaching. No, can you can you guide us through some face? No, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's the weirdest thing ever. You, can, you don't want to see it. That's the first time I've heard that. Oh, the dean. Huh? It's I like think stretching you your face. Like how do you stretch your Ooh. face? Is it like physically like, like stretching? Yeah. Or is no. It like, you don't touch like it, you just let it, you know. Is it like emoting? <laughs> and... We do that like in acting. We, that's, that's like an acting practice as well. It's like freeing Ooh. up your face to, yeah. to, you know, to, it's like a mind-body type thing, but it's also mm -hmm. like mental. So thing. Alex, you should teach us. Like clearly you're... you're so how do you, how do you do it? It seems like, so, like you're like, it. You'll like... Get into the camera. <laughs> you're going to get all of this right now. Yes. So like you'll be trilling a lot. You'll be... <laughs> and then like free up the lips yeah. and then like <laughs> but it's stuff like that and, and you do that for like maybe five minutes yes. and then sometimes sometimes you'll scream really loudly sometimes you'll whisper and be very quiet but it's just to get the get the flow of motion yeah. within your face wow. within your soul and it is kind of meditative meditative um, yes. I wouldn't call it like a, a, a practice of yoga but what you're describing right yeah. now, it, it sounds similar. Yeah. And so, but I know, but whenever we did that, you know, in acting classes and before scenes, it helps you free yourself up and just. Like, That's what I was thinking. Since yeah, you are yeah, I'm thinking, I'm thinking about when you're about to go do like a job interview or you're about to, uh, to do, I constantly I do public speaking, when you're about to go on the stage, when you're facing public, you know, a lot of people, especially, I am an introvert. I'm an introverted person. 
So I, I, I freak out. I have anxiety when I go in front of people. I said, those little exercises you do so that your face is not going to yeah. freeze up in front of people and not be able to talk. Yeah, um, yeah but those, some of them are, I think Comsa has told me about those yeah. too. The nose, uh, the nose breathing before the you, you go to, um, you, yeah, you, I saw it somewhere. So you, you have to, you hold your, your nose, you breathe in like a few times and then you <laughs> hold the same thing like a drone and you do the other one. breathing and There's then you like hold another one. Yeah. The alternate uh -huh. like nostril breathing, like that's you the alternate. Other. Yes. Mm -hmm. that's the nose. It helps. It helps your your um your mental health. Like, like somehow you feel like there's a breeze in your brain, mm -hmm. and whatever anxiety you you had it just dis it disappears. So it's yeah. really really good. Uh, yeah. I do that all the time. It really helps me. Kind of like whatever anxiety I was having, it just it flows away. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Away. that's the thing that I love. I love about <laughs> yoga so much is that it is. Um, it, it's kind of subjective. Yeah. It's it's something that you can present to people mm. and then people kind of make it whatever that you know, make it that's something that works for them. Oh. And so there's different little different practices. We've just spent the last five minutes talking about different breathing techniques. Yes. And right. you know, one thing may feel good for somebody, but another yeah. thing may work for somebody else. And it's just it's not such a cut and dry thing. No. It's mm -hmm. it's something that you can present to somebody again and then yeah. they just run with it. Yeah, yeah. Right. So like, do push-ups before they go on stage. Yeah, well, that's true. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Something that gets your blood, you know, yeah. moving. Mm -hmm. I don't know. What do you recommend? Well, you yeah. There's someone here who wants to show us something. Let me in. I don't know what what she has in store. Please, but before, yeah. before we bring her, can you t tell us little secrets that, um, especially for those young girls that you teach? They mm. and they're the first ones to be in school in their families, so which means they're the first ones to go job hunting, job interviews. They're going to be out there in the world. Um, they, they, there's definitely going to be a lot of anxiety because every nobody have you know they haven't seen their parents doing what they're doing, so they're doing it for the first time, which means it's very very scary. Mm. So. Yeah. Um, with the practices you give them, how do you hope it helps them to move through those life challenges other than just school, but even when they're outside school? So something that we always integrate and we always teach, and I think that they're really powerful and I think they're also really universal, are affirmations. In terms of, I am strong, I am smart, I am powerful, I am beautiful. And, you know, having the girls, you know, beforehand like say write down you know three words and then put them in that you feel and then put them in an affirmation and you can see them light up when when they say it and sometimes it takes a little bit of time in terms of them actually like believing the words like because you know it might just feel like a bit of like a rote you know exercise like this is the thing I'm supposed to write but then you know, something that's really amazing with with Chimera is I think so much of this is already integrated in their in their philosophy that I remember, you know, doing affirmations with um, with the women in in Rwanda and Rwanda, and I've never seen such an incredible group of of women who are so empowered, like sincerely, and they just exude it. Mm -hmm. It was just so incredible to witness because, you know, if if I were to do that, you know with my group of friends, like, I think there'd be a little bit of, you know, sarcasm or kind of like an eye roll, but like there it was completely, you know, authentic. <laughs> and, yeah. 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 Which was just, like, so, it was just so badass. It was so cool. I'm just like, wow. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. They already, they already like, they already, you know, had that kind of, uh, that training, I guess, in terms of those those leadership skills, and then trying to implement that with with a different group and a group of you know um, right. girls mm -hmm. in in Morocco. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah. that's like a whole other thing, like in and of itself. They're so cool too. They all have Billie Eilish, which I love, like because I have they <laughs> when they sign and teach their yoga classes, you know, they're they can make playlists and like they always wanted to like put on like Billie Eilish, and I'm like, oh, yeah. Yeah. oh, Billie Eilish, yeah. <laughs> No, she's got a good flow to yes, like her totally. well so yeah 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 very 
Yeah, yeah, very, very smooth. Yeah. Do you mind if you bring on our, our friend? Uh, no, bring on your yeah, friend. Yeah, she can ask questions. Okay. And, oh, yeah. Yeah. Let's see. Let's think of it as a Q&A session since we have mm -hmm. it. For now. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. Okay. Hi. 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 How are you? Hi. Good. How are you? Good to see you. I'm doing great. Thank you. Good thank you for coming. You're looking wonderful. Oh, oh thank you. Thank you, darling. Thank you. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was listening this great uh, conversation you guys are doing. So, yeah. Then I had to show you something. I always practice with my kids because I work with kids, children sometimes about mm -hmm. the breathing technique. So it's um using your hand. Mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. You can, uh, I don't know if you guys can see. So when you come in here, you can breathe in and out. Mm -hmm. in and yeah. Out. yeah. In oh, I, love I do that too. You know, when you feel like you're, you're about to be crazy. Yeah. I put my hand on the wall, then I practice. Then I can be able to come down. Yeah. So mm -hmm. you can do with your hand, or you can you can do the star. Same oh, technique. Oh, how old are yeah. the kids? Yeah. How old are yeah. the kids you work with? How old yeah, are the kids you work with? Kids too, and uh, even the um um other people can do that. And also, I always do like eight. You can do the same thing, but I do the path on the floor. Mm -hmm. So they can go deep breathing and in and out, in and out. It's working perfect. So oh, wow. that was That's amazing. Could you That's say how old are the kids? Um, oh, I got the different. It's like um, Oatin school system. Mm -hmm. So um, I have uh, from um, K, whatever, K1 to high school. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. wow. That's incredible. Yeah. It's amazing yeah. that, that you're incorporating that with, with yeah. kids because... Yeah, yeah, yeah. The little ones sometimes they get out of chain, so I'm sorry to say that, but so you, I had to try yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you me too, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh wow, that's amazing. Yeah. So, so do you... that's why I was asking the for yoga if they do that, but um she did respond, so I'm good. <laughs> you good? You have no other question for, for Jordan? Um no really. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Something something you could do with your students, and like this is something that, that I do, is it's called a four-part breath, and so you'd have them inhale um, one, two, three, four, hold, hold the breath, one, two, three, four, exhale, one, two, three, four, and then you know there's the pause at the bottom, and then you have them hold the out breath, one, two, three, four, so it's a four-part breath, but then what's fun to do you'll do like a couple of rounds of that and then you can slowly increase. So you're saying, okay, now we're going to go five, and, then oh, nice. and then seven. Oh, thank you. I'll try yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. Oh. All right. So that was it. That's amazing. Yeah. I wish, I, I, wish, wish, I, wish we, I wish we had that when I was in school. Oh, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's it what, it, do you think, I have a question for you too. So do you think, uh, since you work with the kids, you have you been able to practice on your own? Like oh, yeah, able... I do that. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Sometimes I'm out mm. of hand too. I'll be like, oh, yeah. I'm going back there. <laughs> then I go outside, I go like Oof, and I practice, then I'll be able to go back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that that's really yeah. important, especially nowadays with um we need it. We need it that in the classrooms, in schools, yeah, exactly. and especially from the... Nowadays, there's so much anxiety. Kids go through a lot of anxiety. Yeah, you know. yeah. 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 so it's so important. Mm. Absolutely. Yeah, it's very important. Yeah. It was nice seeing you both. Let's see tomorrow. I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so okay. much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. So Thank you. I don't know how to go out, so you guys have we'll to help, help you. It's okay. We'll help you. <laughs> <laughs> that was sweet. Oh, that was great. That was awesome. uh -huh. That's so cool with the hand. I love it. I'm totally. Yeah, I've never heard. Yeah. Of that. I've never heard of that. I know, but for kids, it, it makes. And sense. I'm glad they're doing that in, with the kids nowadays, especially to start from early on. You know, like mm -hmm. because we've never had these tools when we were in school, younger. So 
Right. I mean, we were going through a lot of things, but we never had anything to help us <laughs> deal with whatever we were going through. I know, I know. You reminded yeah, me there was, the someone, there was someone who was talking about millennials uh, knowing what's wrong about them. <laughs> so they would just tell you, oh, yeah, I have anxiety. And then, and then, <laughs> and then, and then you're like, oh, okay. So, yeah, just work around it. So they want so we want you to work around our anxiety, but what are you doing about it? So <laughs> to to you know to get rid of that anxiety or right. for mm-hmm. now people working around you tip talking work around through, you. work through the anxiety. You go yes, how can you work through them? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, work through <laughs> I'm a millennial with anxiety. I think we all, I don't know if everyone has anxiety, but like I am 100% a millennial with anxiety and need to like, <laughs> you to work through. Everyone, I don't know, everyone I know has anxiety. But, yeah. but, but you're doing something about it. Try. So we're talking about how not doing anything about it and just be like, oh yeah. Well, that's the whole reason we're having this conversation is to educate people on how to work through this anxiety mm-hmm. with the help of yoga and meditation. And meditation and prayers yeah. and uh, everything you can, breathing techniques and everything you can to be able to move through life um, with, you know, not freaking out all the time, not being able mm-hmm. to, you know, anxiety can keep you Mm-hmm. from your blessings, from the things yeah. that you're supposed to accomplish in yeah. this yeah. life yeah. and just stay yeah. you know, on your by yourself all the time, scared to mm-hmm. even start a conversation or to even go after the things that you love most to just because mm-hmm. you're the fear of, you know, of, yeah. of uh, yeah. I don't know, being seen sometimes. Yes. Yeah, uh, that's a big... And I think mm-hmm. with yoga, you are completely seen because you, you know, you, you moving with a lot. Because most of the time, uh, most of the yoga practices I've been in, unless it's in my house, but usually you're in the studio with a lot of people that you don't know, strangers, mm-hmm. and your legs are everywhere. You know, you're just, mm-hmm. just stretching, <laughs> <laughs> so you're being really, really vulnerable yeah. in that yeah. moment. Yeah. Or even with meditation, you you close your eyes and you are with strangers so you have to have a really good sense of trust <laughs> to see it. Even, even trusting yourself um that you, you know to be to be with yourself within yourself to be within yourself <laughs> yeah sometimes to trust, right? yeah <laughs> to close your eyes and trust that everything is gonna your surrounding is fine you know mm-hmm. and especially with the like consulate and i uh, being genocide survivors Trust is not something we take for granted. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. So, um, so being able to trust your environment, it's like something really uh, monumental, I would say. Um, and these practices help you start practicing trust mm-hmm. in, within, within yourself. And for mm-hmm. me, at least, that's what it helped me with, trusting myself that I can meet um my dark thoughts i can go into my past and mm-hmm. work through the things that scares me most or the things that hurt me most mm-hmm. um and trust that not every time i'm going to close my eyes i'm going to see it so mm-hmm. i think one of the things that these practices helped me with was um to meet you know my young self and mm-hmm. all my struggles and be able to let you know, being able to release it from from my body. Yeah. And so mm-hmm. just like just knowing that the more I practice, I think that was the, something that intrigued me with meditation, especially mm-hmm. was because I was scared of closing my eyes for twenty minutes. Yeah. I was like, oh, oh I can't. Unless you just be dark thoughts in my head. I can't. <laughs> I can't be there for twenty minutes unless I'm asleep. <laughs> 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 but but the, but the promise, just knowing that the more you go through your thoughts, your dark thoughts, the more they leave your body, and you won't be having those negative thoughts or horrible sure. thoughts in your in your head in the future. I think that was you know promising. I was like, okay, I, I can I can deal. I can deal with that. If mm-hmm. if the next ten years I won't be feeling this way, yeah. then yeah, yeah. yeah. So. That's why. 
you know, like about like trauma informed yoga, and I think that's that's a huge part about why it's it it was developed. And then also, I think a lot of teachers and studios have not integrated those practices in and have just really like normalized them. Like for instance, you know, um, not doing hands on assists without you know permission or simply just like not doing them at all. Giving different opportunity opportun- giving different options for for shavasana for rest because you know lying down on your back um, with your eyes closed be really triggering for someone and so saying you can lay on your side you can lay on your belly you can just sit up you can you know have your um your eyes be um like like a soft gaze so just kind of like you know staring off and you know in a different point and um I think that's really important as well is just to be just to be cognizant of who you're teaching even if you don't know everyone's full story which which you aren't unless you're specifically teaching like a special population like yeah. a shelter or with um like veterans or you know like when i i went to sabota which is a survivors group and in, in rwanda yeah. um who um consulate is connected to um cool. so unless you have that kind of knowledge beforehand i think there's really easy um adjustments that that you can make to to holding your your yoga class and it's and it's small things it's nothing um major but then of course it's 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 realizing that different things can be triggering for different people even smells like even if you're you yeah. know in like um essential oils at the end you know lavender to you could be like really comforting and calming and relaxing but to then to someone else it could you know be really upsetting and so i think um it's just a level of mindfulness that um everyone can really benefit from absolutely absolutely mm-hmm. absolutely talking about smells Conso, you have anything to talk about that smell smells how they affect you or the smell for me yes what type of smells you like or what ones triggers you or <laughs> if if if, yeah. if you ended up in uh for example in uh jordan's yoga class and there was time you know what would be your favorite smell i think i think um smell you know like um lavender or anything Anything like a very like a soft smells good for me. Yeah. Flowery is is good for me. It smells like it, it makes me feel good. But before there was a trigger of grass. I used to have like a, a grass, you know, like um like fresh cut grass. That fresh cut grass, like a smell of it. It was kind of like a trigger something, you know, like a genocide. For some reason, it was connected to genocide somehow. Mm-hmm. So because of maybe because of <laughs> being in the outside in the genocide, I guess it's somehow. But now I'm okay. I'm okay. I no longer have you that no kind of trigger. Have. Yeah, it's not like a trigger in a way, but it was more of like it would take me there. Like mm-hmm. I would just. It's a tr- it is a yeah. trigger. Yeah. Yeah, it's a trigger. Yeah. yeah, but I don't have that as much in, since I do, you know, meditation and and yoga. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I don't, I don't feel like that anymore. So it doesn't like. Yeah, I guess the brain is somehow learned how to not look at it as a like you know the smell of grass like as if it's a, a threat to me. It's probably the brain and now understood. understood. Maybe I'm reconciled with grass now, so the grass are yes. no longer. The grass is grass now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's a smell. That's a smell that triggered me actually. Really which, true. Which yeah. Yeah. yeah, people have different way of like you know. Yeah, so the grass was a kind of trigger. So, but now I'm, I'm good. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah you're welcome. Yeah. It's, it's <laughs> at least, it's, I mean, uh, it could be something else. At least it's a grass. Anyway, yeah. so I had to, it's nature. I had to, I had, because I was uh, in the nature a lot. Yeah. So, during that period, so maybe that's why. Yeah. 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 Makes sense. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. See, that's why I, I like that. Like, I don't know how Jordan. I don't know how you learned that the yeah. triggers and stuff. But I think mm-hmm. being mindful like that with your students, it's so special because I don't know if everybody will be, you know, will remember that. So, you know, because yeah, there's courses you can take. I mean, specifically for trauma informed like yoga classes. Yeah. 
Um, yeah. There's there's like diff- there's so many different um, resources for for people to yeah. learn from um, in in the wellness space. Um, mm-hmm. The other one as well is like music as well. Like you know you might think it's like your favorite song and like really calming, but then for someone else it could even if it's just the lyrics that are talked about um, that then also you know evoke some discomfort. Mm-hmm. And it's not to say that. Like the yoga practice is is confronting. It's a confronting mm-hmm. practice, which is right. part of it because it's you on the mat moving and breathing, and you're being guided through different shapes. And there's also, you know, you know, as you said, like there's also um, there's the trust element as well because then there's other people around you who are also moving and breathing through the same shapes, and it's kind of this this communal trust. Um, but I definitely think um, like I don't play. Um, it's very rare that I'll play. Um, songs with lyrics like everything's um ambient or instrumental because mm-hmm. also that's a distraction as well like the whole point is you're trying to move towards yourself so you know that's also something that i've noticed with a lot of different uh, yoga teachers is mm-hmm. um, just having a lot of care in terms of the words and language that that you use when you teach and or when you guide and then um also when you create the atmosphere ambiance like just you know, whatever little things and the little adjustments that you can do. So you really are creating, you know, a safe space for, for the students, for the practitioners. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. yeah. I think Elamiene says something about what they smell, like a summer <laughs> smell. <laughs> yeah, I saw something about, uh, she thought it was weird to uh, uh, summer rain, I think. Mm-hmm. After summer rain, no, that's not weird at all. No, I love that. That's a, that's a, that's a I think a lot of people, yeah, yeah. Because summer rain, you smell the dirt. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not, it's not weird. No, not weird, not weird. <laughs> um, but I wanted to. Oh, sorry. Yeah. No, no. So I wanted to talk a little bit about like the power of giving, in Jordan, oh, like yeah. your your whole um, <laughs> philosophy on why giving is so important. Yeah. Um, and not just tangible things, but giving yourself to mm-hmm. people, particularly mm-hmm. in this in this meditative space, this yoga space. We were just talking about vulnerability is yeah. such a strong aspect mm-hmm. of this, and you do have to offer yourself um, to people and offer yourself to the practice of yoga and meditation. Mm-hmm. So, what do you? I think. I think it's an integral part of our humanity is the giving and the receiving. And so when you're able to mm-hmm. give a part of yourself, be it time or energy, or for instance, and in my case, it's sharing the skill set and the knowledge of the yoga practice um, so that it can then be used for, for those who are learning it. And, and ideally I would become obsolete and they can, you know, do, do it on their own. Um, mm-hmm. And then receiving either like the feedback or um wanting more or wanting something different it just keeps the conversation going and i think it really connects us to one another because it's that like constant ebb and flow and it really is what relationships to being you know strong and authentic and um and also um very symbiotic as well because if You don't want to always be giving because then you you know you get drained and tired, you know bitter and like resentful, and you don't also always want to be, you know, receiving because then um, that can cause like laziness or feelings of entitlement or you know there's there's a joy in, in in giving and there's a joy in being able to to share something be it as you know honestly you said like tangible or um, or <laughs> even um, I don't know a conversation or or you know a new breathing technique or or something else that someone can then take away and um it just broadens the the knowledge basis yeah yeah yeah, yeah. It's, 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 it's something very i don't know how to describe it because look all everything we're talking about is like very old wisdom mm-hmm. and i think it's all it's all stuff that people have known throughout the history of, of the world, history of humanity, but maybe our the way we speak about it changes depending on the time. And I think now we're in a very very interesting time in that we are more interconnected than we've ever been. 
to the yeah. technology. Um, mm -hmm. But I feel like a lot of us, and especially coming out of the pandemic, a lot of us are, are trying to relearn how to connect with one another and give our time and give our energy um, and share space with people. Yeah. Um, and so I, I find myself asking these questions, um, how do I reintegrate myself to, to a society that has just been through collectively, I think a, a traumatic experience. Mm -hmm. um, and how do I give, how do I give myself to, to people who, who are in need or who could use a shoulder to, to, to cry on, to, you know, yeah. an ear to listen to whatever. Um, and I know I'm not the only one who thinks yeah. who's going through these, these this very interesting thing, yeah. but I just think it's very interesting um, how it's kind of asking the question here. And am I, am I the only one? Do you feel that way as well? I'm not sure if that makes a lot of sense. No, I think that makes a tremendous amount of sense. I also think for a lot of us, like the pandemic was kind of like this, the great filter, because then a lot of the relationships that maybe were not as strong, just kind of like fizzled out and faded away. And I think that's okay, because like, I know for me on a personal level, you know, I'm a lot more selective in terms of friendships that I'm currently, that I currently have, because those are the, those are the ones that doesn't feel like I'm putting in effort. It doesn't feel like it's just me reaching out. It feels, it feels very, you know, equal in, in that way. Um, and I think, I don't know if that was, if, if any of you like had that experience as well in terms oh, yeah. of a lot of relationships that were made, you know, just kind of dissipated. Yeah. yeah. I think, yeah, I think also you're not the only person that um, no, no, you're not the only one. I think there were, there were relationships that were easy to yeah. maneuver or mm -hmm. not even maneuver, they were just, th those relationships were just there. Mm -hmm. And you, you felt like you were going through the pandemic with the, with these, with these relationships. Yeah. And then there were other relationships that were just slipped away, slipping away slowly until after <laughs> two years, they were like, poof. So I yeah. think. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. The autopilot relationships. Yes. Relationships. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so I think there were, I think. Or or rekindled after the pandemic or something. Or rekindled, like yeah. Or yeah. a new one. Yeah, mm -hmm. but I feel like there were people um, who don't know how to share the hardship they're going through, and mm -hmm. and then they would just you know keep it inside. And some of you may have been our friends. Um, there were people that lost a lot of family members, yeah. um, and then and then that you know, going through a pandemic and going through losses, not just because of COVID, also just a natural, other other deaths because was the period of two years was, other things were still happening as the COVID then was happening as well. So I think there was a lot of tra trauma and going through hardships without connecting with your friends. I think it made people... I don't know. It made it disconnected people at some um, at some level, and then there was a lot of burnout because spending two years in the house, people f tr f tried to figure out how to operate, how to work inside the home or the home, and and they just you know there was a lot of uh, it was almost like the pandemic came and. Pff, and just like it was like a whirlwind and everything. Yeah, well, yeah, it was like a tornado on everybody. Like mm -hmm. we didn't know what to do with it. Like so the first, uh, the first uh, year, it was yeah. more of like you know, you stay home, no choice because of the the um, confinement. What do you call it? The, uh, the lockdown. The lockdown. Yes. Um, the audio is. Uh, the <laughs> <laughs> keep on, keep on going, keep on. I'm going through confinement, lockdown. You're going through what? Lockdown. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> She's oh, going through a lock she... No, she'll come back. She's okay. going through a lockdown. <laughs> 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 but um, in terms of your point about, you know, giving and, and how to do that, um, I think everyone has causes that really, like, resonate with, with themselves. You know, maybe, I, I, think I, I think we talked about this last time, like, Maybe for some, it's about, oh, yes. Yeah. Sorry, consulate. 
Sorry, it real, it, the, the lockdown realizes I didn't have enough to make it. I don't know. Some reason. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. To, to, to go to the the lockdown. <laughs> you're, you're, you're no, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. Like. <laughs> So, so sorry what did you say something sorry oh i was saying like you know there's what really like illuminates me like the cause that i really am passionate about like for me it's girls education like for someone else maybe it's more about the environment or maybe it's about um, endangered species or or something like that and so i think we can't do everything and we can't put our time mm -hmm. and our energy because i had a meeting with someone earlier and they said everyone is in the headspace now of like making up for lost time, which I think very right. much connects, you know, back with having like this great, you know, the great pause of, of two years. Yeah. And so that has to then connect, that then connects with, you know, being more selective with um, where we put our time and where we put our energy, especially since I think more so than ever, like we really feel like it's this very, very, very precious commodity. Mm -hmm. So I think, choosing one thing or maybe two things that you know doesn't feel like work that feels like this is something i can get behind and this is something i can share about and um you know be it like volunteering um at um a soup kitchen or um maybe doing a service trip somewhere um just you know whatever it is that can someone to to that cause that's greater than themselves like i think I think that's amazing. And I think yeah. it's just about finding that thing. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. 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 I love the way, you know, you, you, you see things. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I think there is hope and positivity and, and just figuring out, figuring out life as we do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So you were saying something before you went to, into your lock, your personal lockdown. My, my personal lockdown. What, what did I say? I even forgot. Oh, I think forgot. I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Um, yeah. so we, have, we have a few minutes left. We have five minutes yeah. left. Maybe a little bit of, maybe I can say that um, I, I was just thinking about when you say about giving, you're asking giving what it means. And Yes, yes. Um, uh, I, I remember, I think it's from uh, a quote from someone who lived like many, many years <laughs> mm -hmm. and who never lived in this time. Like, uh, it's, I think it's um, Saint Francis, um, uh, Francois um, of Assis, the, the, one of the people who is known in the centuries, lived mm -hmm. in the centuries. Mm -hmm. He used to say like, in a giving, one of the poems, he said, in a giving, you receive. Yes. One of the poems is say, in giving you receive. So mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah. I just want to add that in giving you receive. Yeah. When you give, <laughs> you receive. Yeah. You properly. So you receive what you give. Yeah. It's because it's, it's more of like he, he wasn't like saying it was more of like a spiritual way he was saying like you could be like mm -hmm. you get when you give you get more that you mm -hmm. probably never knew. Yes, mm -hmm. abso absolutely, absolutely. Mm -hmm. In many ways, in many ways. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, François de Cise, yeah, in yeah. French. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. One of his uh, prayer, it's a prayer, actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. are words to live by, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, mm -hmm. before we end, should we remind people that the, they should be giving? Yes, Jordan, can you, yeah, can you speak <laughs> on that? Can you, uh, I'm not sure I did as great a job as I'm sure. <laughs> speak on about uh, donate, donating to Soul Journey. Oh, okay. please, please donate to us. Um, <laughs> we have our on-the-ground yoga teacher training program that needs support so that we can continue to work with in um, Rwanda and Morocco and also be able to expand and go outwards. Like, I know we need funds so we can buy yoga mats in Rwanda because they just built a leadership center. And then I know for the next um, tier of um, students in in Morocco, you know, we need supplies, um, even just to be able to like print the manuals, like really like a little goes along yeah. you know, mm -hmm. as generous as you want. Um, because mm -hmm. without the financial support, we're not able to do the work that we're doing. So um, today is Giving Tuesday. Thank you to 
help and support and share and donate um, is absolutely appreciated. Yes, absolutely. And if you donate, mm -hmm. uh, one of the donors may, you may be one of the winners if because you, your donations goes a long way, mm -hmm. but also you may get a, a, uh, an a outfit, special, a special, special outfit, outfit yes. yeah. from Best Range. Yeah. And trust yeah. me, we have really good, really great quality uh Ben's range are good. Yeah, yeah. I think it's uh, yeah. So <laughs> one of maybe for those who don't know Ben's range, you can tell them Ben's range and they can understand what it. Oh for yeah. For those who don't know Ben's range, yeah. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. So here at Ben's range, if you are not, uh, you it's your first time here at the community conversations at Ben's range. Ben's range is a sustain sustainability brand, fashion brand, and a lot of the. Uh, Stuff we do is uh, organic. Is it uh, supports the the industry we work with, mm -hmm. uh, like um, uh, production companies we work with. They do uh, organic uh, materials, fabrics, and and so we uh, so then we explain it more. Yes, we're no, home, it's home very eco friendly. Yes, um, yes. Everything that we do is is in making sure that the people involved, the people. We're involved in production of the garments, production of clothing. We're all treated equally, yes. and, and and the practices are uh, forward thinking, uh, environmentally friendly, like we said. Yes, and just making sure that we are sustaining this planet and and making fashionable clothing yeah. um, as well. This at the same time, yeah. and, and supporting the communities involved. Yes, as well. absolutely, and making sure they people are working on the fields are also taken care of yes are not mm -hmm. just used like most of the companies out there not throwing mm -hmm. shade but <laughs> but it's a really mm -hmm. good um yeah mm -hmm. it's, it's one of my favorite brands not because of i have i have a beautiful outfit from them, yeah yeah, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, actually it's the first <laughs> brand that i i modeled for so yeah. that was, and even just like seeing, I remember back in 2017, um, when I was doing my, when I, when I met Best Friend, I was doing the modeling for them. I remember the way they treated models there. It was mm. almost, it was like, oh my God, I wish every company would treat people like this because they're just a human connection that they that it's not about the clothing it's about those who are wearing it and i think mm -hmm. that kind of was a really great message yeah. for me um even for 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 those of us who are modeling their clothes having the choice to say no i'm not feeling comfortable in you know uh in this put me in the different thing then just ask them asking you are you okay with this is this who you are and just making sure they understand who that person is yeah. and so and this so that was very very special for me uh and consulate has has you have one nice pieces too a nice uh, piece of uh what, what do you call it um how would you call it uh how, i don't know it's like a a top and a pants, right? The, 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 it's like um, jumpsuit. I like to wear like like a romper. No, no it's like a, a, a sweater, like a really nice sweater. It's white, it's white pants, but not like a regular sweat pants. It's one of my expensive sweat pants I have. I don't use. <laughs> 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 it's a special occasion. That's a perfect bottom. I'm even from leisure. Do you? No, you know, like athleisure, like it's yes, like it is. You could, you could, yeah. you could just go out with it and have yeah. a nice shoe, yeah. and yeah, a nice spot out. Like in this weather, you can just yeah, wear it if you have like a casual meeting. So yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Mm. So one yeah. lucky winner. It doesn't matter if you donate a dollar or if you donate a hundred dollars. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you donate. But yes. you might win a bespoke, one of a kind outfit, and there's two to choose from, and those are on. Um, you can see them on Base Ranges Instagram, mm -hmm. and then also on yes. Sword and Yoga's Instagram grid as well. And you can request which one you want. So yeah, that's yes. we're absolutely. And we're announcing the the winner on Saturday. We're announcing yeah. it on Sunday. Oh, Sunday. Sunday. Yes, yeah. Oh, cut Sunday. off the cut off Sorry. date is, is Saturday. Cut off. Saturday at 6 p.m. Uh, Pacific time. Okay. And then the following day, we'll be announcing the winners of this very special garment. Oh, this is fun. Yeah, very fun. 
<laughs> and all for a great cause, of course. We're, yes, we're, so we're, much. Yeah, for a great cause. Yeah. Yes. All so much, and thank you yeah, for, for putting um, that together. It means it means the world to me, so thank you all. Thank you. You're amazing. Yeah. You're amazing. You're doing incredible work. So, yeah. And everybody should just really make sure they follow you and see everything you're doing, whoever wants to travel with you. Next time, oh, yeah. when you do a problem, yes, a trip to to Rwanda or to yeah, yeah. Or anyway. for next, I think we have Cape Town. Our Cape Town yoga retreat is coming up, and that's supporting Lalala. So it's um, they're female empowerment students, so um, young women who are from the neighboring townships, and they use art self expression. So we'll be doing art and yoga with them. So that's February um, 18th to 25th, and then also we have Nicaragua. Um, which is July 1st to 7th, and that's supporting um, the Girls Home Nika. So um, girls who, um, for varying reasons, who can't live at home, so they um, are getting school and support and education as well. And then also we are figuring out our Morocco dates for October, and then we're going to have one more special retreat um, for the year. Well, that's, that's incredible. Mm -hmm. so, um, one last question. Yes. How would, if some, anybody wants to be part of your nonprofit, wants to join you in giving more, how can they do it? They can sign up for our mailing list to be in the know in terms of everything um, that's happening. We do events um, often in London and in New York and in LA. Uh, we have the retreats coming up. So it's a great um, holiday present, maybe for you or for a loved one. You can you know, travel um, purpose um, and incredible, you know, life-changing bucket list experience, but then so, um, we have a dollar donation per person that's supporting roles in the country that we're in. Um, and then also, you know, we're all talking to fans or different partnerships. If you have a cool company and you want to do something with us, like shoot us an email um, at info at soldier.com and yeah, I'm all open to what <laughs> making new friends yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you guys want to and the, good thing, and the good thing i like about your um organization you you connect people from all over the world in a way when you do those trips that means a lot of people from all walks of life they sign in they sign up and they meet and you do a trip together so it's like um incredible thing so you connect people too so yeah. Absolutely. Thank Absolutely. you so much for all the work you're doing. Thank mm -hmm. you so much, Console. Um, and, <laughs> and also, um, if people want to donate, this link we put here, you can be able to go there and, and donate mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and support the young women around the world mm -hmm. by supporting yes. this nonprofit. You're touching so many lives. And so mm -hmm. go on and do it. Uh, we love you all. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you. And um, yeah, yeah, we'll see you next month. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Jordan. Thank you, guys. Thank you. 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 Thank you.